Welcome to curl 778.0. This is July 21, 2021. So yes, I just um, did the magic stuff. So I pushed everything to Git, tagged it, uploaded the tarballs, signed everything, updated GitHub and everything, and the, the site is updated. And uh, yeah, it's out there. I'm Daniel, of course, you know, I, I'm, I'm the founder of the project. I'm the lead developer. That's my website. That's my Twitter handle. Follow me on Twitter to, to get all the twe uh, tweets and nonsense about curl all the time. I, of course, work on curl. Uh, yeah, as a full time job, as a spare time project and uh, as much as possible. I work for Wolf SSL. We sell curl support. If you need help with curl in any way, shape or form, you contact us and we will have you going and <clears throat> today I'm going to do my regular curl presentation curl release presentations and I'm going to go through some numbers of the release some and, and this time we have some extra interesting security issues to talk about I have, we have new features and changes we have I I'll go through a few actually few with the normal bug fixes this time um, because of reasons and then just a few words about the future because we don't really know about the future anyway, but uh, let's get there. This is release 201. So uh, yeah, the, the the previous one was the 200s. Now we're on the 201st going forward. This time we have a record amount of uh, contributors. We're thanking 83 different people in the release notes, which uh, is more than ever before. We are, I think we were at 82 in the previous release. And 49 of them are new, so we're adding the number of contributors in the list at uh, an amazing speed and pace, actually. 56 different authors committed code in this release, 32 new, which I think is great, right? F so 56 authors in 56 days, uh, 30 th 32 new authors in 56 days. That's, yeah, that's not even, yeah, that's more than one every other day, new. It's uh, it's good, I think. Yeah, keep it going. And yes, we kept the release schedule exactly this time. So the release cycle was exactly 56 days as we want it to be. And th that means that we're eight uh, and a half thousand days since we uh, since the first curl release. We're adding up the numbers. Yeah, a lot of days. <coughs> and okay. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a lot of security uh, this time to talk about. And uh, I'm going to go through them a little bit. Uh, as always, get into the actual uh, advisory page on the CURL website to read all the details and all the fine uh, stuff about these things. If you want to get to them, if my explanations here are a little bit too brief for you or you, you don't understand it, go there and you will find everything. And if there's any uh, anything that is unclear after you read those details on the site, then ask and we will update those and make sure that they're on there they're updated and corrected so <clears throat> and actually this time the all the cve numbers are in a serial sequence so you it's easy to remember them they're cve 2021 and then 20 22 9 22 this is the first one and they, then then will be then the 23 24 25 26 the at the end of the number so let's start out with this 22 one wrong content via metalink not discarded we, as I announced already before uh, on a blog post and I talked about on Twitter at least, so if you follow that, you know that we've ditched uh, Metalink support in curl now. And this is one of the reasons. There are actually a bunch of, we identified a bunch of problems with the support of Metalink and we decided that it is well, not worth fixing it. So we just cut it out completely from this release. This is one of the reasons. So. When you download something with Metalink, Metalink is an, um, a metadata format that provides a lot of URLs for the same file. So you would get the same file from different locations, you know, maybe two, maybe 200 places and curl would pick one of those to get it from. And the file includes a hash for the file so that you would down and you uh, curl would know it, that it actually downloads the correct content, even if it downloads from another mirror or somewhere from somewhere else. But if that hash mismatched, curl would only tell that on standard out. It wouldn't actually discard the, con the, the bad content. And this was 
far too easily missed by for for users so it was if someone would you know uh, breach one of the servers replace the contents of, of the file it was easy easily done that the user would then just by mistake or deliberately get the wrong content without noticing we consider this a security problem so um, there's no fix for this in the metalink support in curl but the fix is basically don't use metalink and we won't support metalink going forward so <coughs> this is still um, highlighting this fact for those who are using metalink with older versions of curl and another metalink security problem that we also uh, found and, re and now uh, reveal and talk about is the metalink download sense credentials the 23 at the end of the cve and in this case it's basically just that if you use credentials uh, hp authentication to get the original metalink file which is an xml file with all those uh, urls i mentioned uh, well, it doesn't have to be many URLs, but still a bunch of URLs. Um, if you, you would use credentials to get that original XML file, curl would then, without telling the user really, and, and really in an unexpected way, I would say reuse those that, um, uh, credentials in when asking for all the individual XML, uh, URLs. Uh, that was not intended, and it was um, really not, uh, you know, obvious to the user so and if you would in a typical case when you would use the HTTP basic authentication mechanism that's really leaking the name and the password to all those servers that host those URLs which could be one could be many could be someone uh, you don't know so you would then potentially leak your credentials to those servers this is not a very commonly used feature so I would expect that the number of actually i mean um, harmed users are very few but still st still a nasty thing and a reason another reason why we are removing metalink support in this version so no patch for this just don't use metalink and it won't be supported going forward um okay that was the second one the third one so those two, uh, we don't, we won't fix. So they're just, you know, making you aware of the problems in previous versions. The third one, of course, is um, is one that we've fixed in this version, and this is um, probably nastier. It's a it's a case of bad connection reuse because we do the wrong checks when we check. Okay. One step back so curl has a connection pool so if you do repeated requests to you know you want to get this url this url this url this url so curl keeps the connection alive after you've done a, a request or a transfer so that if you when you do the next one it can potentially reuse the connection it used previously um, and it it uses that it provides that very transparently so the user of libcurl or curl doesn't have to care about it you will just ask for a new transfer with this url and libcurl will transparently reuse the correct uh, previous connection if possible and it turns out that uh, we had two flaws in, in in that reuse logic one was that we didn't take the issuer certificate into account but that's very rarely used so that's probably not as important as we actually did so when you when you set up one connection uh, no sorry when you set up one transfer and then set up another transfer we make sure that all the conditions for the transfer are the same before we can re re reuse the, that connection and if you would you use set up i want to use this certificate uh, set and you use a path name for that and we just compare the paths and make sure that you used this it was the same sets but the path checks actually did the checks case insensitively which on a on a typical linux file system may not be the same files right because the file names are sense case sensitive not insensitive typically there are operating systems and file systems that are, are the other way around but uh, still because of this bad check you could actually set up 
different certificates but curl would think they are the same and would reuse connections wrongly a niche use case probably very few people are actually hurt by this but it's still a bad thing going forward uh, the the face palm moment of this release cycle um, we fixed this problem we thought in the previous release so if you see this in, in the um, little blurb here i mentioned another cve cve 2021 22898 that's a cve we uh, reported in the previous release i talked about it you know 56 days 56 days ago i did a re release video when i talked about this cve and it turns out that we fixed it or really the fix we did was not a proper fix so it wasn't actually fixed we just fixed half of it pr pretty much we f f so um, the red hat security team they r pointed out to us that no it wasn't a correct fix so they actually the flaw remained and um, now we fixed it again hopefully this time we fixed it correctly but it was really uh, yeah really embarrassing to to fix the same problem again in a subsequent release and th the original problem here has been around since march 20, 2001 so uh, um yeah it's been around for a long time <coughs> and of course if if i'm being honest here the, the Red Hat security team, they were the only ones who have told us about this bad fix for this flaw. So a lot of people actually saw it, applied it, were happy with it and, and so on. So it's, it's not only that I didn't see it, the fix not being proper, but it still hurts, right? Okay, and then uh, and the fifth and the final uh, security advisory for this cycle, curl opt SSL cert mix up with secure transport. <coughs> this is a little bit of a, uh, a special one too, um, as all uh, they all are. So the secure transport is the uh, TLS backend that you can use when you build for Apple operating systems, Mac OS primarily, but also iOS and uh, iPad OS and TV OS or, or, or all those Apple operating systems. Um, and when, due to historic reasons, the API for libcurl have um, this option that you specify your client certificate with. It originally was um, made so that you would specify a file name that this is the client certificate to use. But for some TLS backends, you can also specify a, a name. So file name or a name, and the name would then be already imported into a database somewhere. So this, this works the same way with NSS, for example. But it doesn't matter. You could then use a file name or a name. But what happens if you use a name that is also a file name? How would you know which, which one it is? <coughs> uh, so if you would um, use the name here, if you refer to a certificate by name, you could call it whatever. And if you then would, but in this case, curl would check for uh, for it as a file before it checks uh, allows it to be a name which then could make an attacker if you could put um, a local you could put a file in the local uh, current directory with the same name as the key in the database you could then make the application use the wrong certificate basically stupid mix-up um, another niche case i think i mean this is a potentially uh, you, you could be potentially be vulnerable for this just because of some rare fluke or coincidence but should be should be limited and um, you really shouldn't execute i think in a directory where others can put files anyway so it might be a bit of a lesson there for anyone anyway <clears throat> okay, those are the five security advisories and all together I didn't actually get time to mention all the individual rewards for all these but in total we pay 4200 US dollars in in bug bounty payouts this release cycle for all these five together which of course is a lot of money and I'm I'm um, I'm actually 
pretty happy that we are able to pay this amount of money and I'm I'm sad that we had this amount of uh, security problems but I'm happy that we fixed them so you could discuss is this a good thing or a bad thing it's a bad thing to have security problems it's a good thing to fix them and I don't think uh, any modern fast-paced develop project can avoid security problems the good thing is how we handle them we fix them we move forward and <clears throat> thanks to sponsors of course we can keep on paying uh, security researchers f for for reporting these pr problems <clears throat> okay those were the security things we introduce a few new things in this release again hence the dot uh, zero in the release uh, in the version number we have about six things that are actually new or i would say maybe changed in this release so <coughs> first of all now the the url parser will reject spaces in urls by default you can actually uh, tell it not to by uh, setting a bit but spaces were never part of urls uh, they they've never been treated as part of urls by curl really more of more more or less just by accident and now it will insist on not having spaces in urls unless you expect, uh, explicitly tell the parser to allow them i expect this will make a uh, few users uh, sad somewhere but it will also make a few other users happy because now it'll the the url parser will now be more strict and will be more uh, ensuring that you're actually using correct URLs when, when the URL parser says it is okay. We're introducing a new error code, error code name actually, because this is another, and th this was an existing error code with another name. So this, the number is reused, we're just changing the name and we're expanding the use of it. It actually was used to report a specific setup uh, for that a particular telnet option you could set with setup now we're using it if you provide a setup with a particular syntax and we then later realizes that the syntax provided but the application provided it wrongly and then we can report it and the error uh, buffer will then contain more details about the specific uh, syntax that was wrong it will be used for example for resolve and connect to and stuff like that it provides a linked list with instructions to curl which my and that linked list might be interpreted later in in the process and not at when you do the setup so it won't recognize the problems at setup time but later when you run the actual transfer anyway you can read up all about it and the local host the the name when you use that in a url it will now truly always be local it will be 107 127.0.0.1 in IPv4 and colon colon 1 in IPv6 and it will not be anything else. Um, it, it won't use the name resolver to resolve it. You can now use the client certificate as a blob when you use embed TLS as a TLS backend which is just a way to provide this in memory instead of via a file. Just a handy for those uh, in particular embedded devices or particular builds you do and as i mentioned uh, several times already in the security section section of, of, the, of this presentation the metalink support is gone metalink was provided by the curl tool it was not in the library but anyway if you're using the metalink option now it'll just say that its support is not provided by curl and this is an unfortunate and contrary to our concepts um, breaking behavior it breaks I mean it breaks old if you have a script using metalink it'll break right it won't work anymore this is not how we do things in curl usually so this is a big you know no no and violation against our own policies but in this case we just couldn't see any proper good way forward without spending a lot of time and effort on fixing things and since no is the number of users are really really low and nobody is really willing to pay us to do this we're just going to rip it out so if anyone is desperately looking for metalink support in curl to be brought back come talk to us but also then consider sponsoring time and efforts to make sure that um, 
this happens in a proper way because we to, to get metalink back we need a lot of development more test cases more more fixing of things it's very disappointing the metalink i mean it might also have been a little bit of a, a, f a way to do things that we don't r really need anymore Anyway, I won't linger in, in that. We also now support username and passwords for MQTT transfers, basically providing credentials uh, for the MQTT protocol. It has a supported way to do that, and now Curl supports that too. <coughs> the six things we changed, added in, in this release. We, as I mentioned, did I? Uh, we fixed 176 bugs. Um, that's uh, a record amount and um, it's, there's a lot of things we fixed <coughs> of course uh, this is in actually today I mean July 21st this is actually in the middle of my vacation so I f I'm a little bit behind of, uh, with everything so I didn't spend a lot of time with this little section of my presentation so I'm only going to go through uh, I think seven uh, bug fixes we did that I think are particularly important or interesting or just fun to talk about. But of course, 176 bug fixes, so you could go into the release, uh, the change log yourself and read up about them. If you go to the site and read them, we have links on virtually every bug fix to more details. So you could read up on everything that you think is interesting. Or if there's not enough detail, ask us um, on the mailing list or on the IRC channel or wherever. And <clears throat> I did a lot of fixes for the Hyper backend. So now curl built with Hyper works better. <clears throat> um, it's not on par with the built-in HP yet, but it's coming there. And I've been bouncing back and forth with the Hyper project people uh, a lot during this cycle because I've also been missing a few th cru crucial things from the API in Hyper, so which has prevented me from from doing more progress than I've done so and I think they're also progressing uh, with providing not only us then but the world with better APIs to to do some of the things that curl does or some of the things that curl needs to do in order to you know maintain behavior so we need some new stuff from hyper but it's going forward and we're now uh, running um, more tests with Hyper than ever before. And I think we're down to, uh, well, less than 100 test cases left to fix with Hyper. And I think almost 50 of them are using the HTTP 1XX responses. And those are <laughs> needed. Uh, need those. They need that new API from Hyper that is coming. I know they presented it recently. I just haven't managed to update curl yet to use that <coughs> during this cycle we also ditched travis ci as a ci platform because of reasons you know they're no longer providing it free and charging a lot of money and not in a good way for us so we switched to primarily zool ci and also a few circle ci but um so no more travis and and a lot of zool and some circle ci and of course, a lot of other CI services too. We use GitHub Actions and uh, Azure Pipelines and Zero CI. And uh, I think we're using six different CI services now. <coughs> and uh, another little detail, we, I, someone uh, broke how we set the preferred TLS versions when we used GNU TLS as a TLS backend, um, which prevented it from actually succeeding uh, to do TLS handshakes in some situations which was just silly and now it's fixed and now GNU TLS works well curl with GNU TLS works as it's supposed to work we had a little memory leak uh, well potential memory leak in um, on Mac and here again I think it's all the uh, Apple operating systems this is uh, a weird well you know this is this is an API call uh, doesn't uh, it's a really weird one but it's it is used uh, in name resolving so i i think that there's a risk for a minor memory leak in basically all name resolves in curl and uh, now we fixed that so now it should be gone i don't think it actually happens on every name resolve 
but uh, I'm, I'm also not sure exactly when it happens because these are uh, some fine details on, on inner weirdo Mac OS workings. <coughs> and uh, we don't consider HSTS support experimental anymore. So now we build it by, by default. So if you build curl now, you will get it built in. I mean, you still have to enable it in your transfer to actually use HSTS. So uh, it's not enabled in the transfers by default, but it's enabled in the builds by default. So your typical curl build will now have HSTS supported. One of the little things we've also fixed this time, and I think it's worthy of fix mentioning, is just because netrc, you know, that's the file name .netrc supported in, in Linux and, and Linux, uh, Unix since, I don't know, since forever, since uh, a very long time back. But uh, uh, anyway, it's, it's a way to provide credentials for FTP transfers, actually. And for curl, you can provide it credentials for any protocol. And if you tell curl to parse netrc files to get the credentials, it actually didn't work with one of the one of the key for keywords in in the netrc files called macdef which is a macro definition thing so now it should work even if you have a macdef thing in your netrc curl will still uh, find the credentials properly hopefully the netrc support was added really early in in curl days so i think this bug has been around for i, I think maybe 22 years or so maybe 23 uh, <coughs> a very long time so presumably not a lot of people actually use MacDef in their netrc file and ask curl to parse it at the same time. Uh, another thing that people noticed, this is a regression. We added this regression in, I, th I think, in the previous release. So it made, it basically disabled SS, SS, um, TLS, well, it's actually SSL. TLS, I don't know, remember, session ID, caching, reuse. Uh, so it broke it. Basically, as a session ID is a little thing you could, it's basically a shortcut to get a faster uh, TLS handshake the next time you handshake with the same server for the same conditions. So you could just say, hey, it's me again, continue from where we were before and the server would recognize that and you would shortcut the, the handshake and it would be just a quicker handshake and you would uh, get a TLS connection faster the next time. Uh, anyway, due to some mm, pretty stupid mistake in the previous release, we basically killed that ability when you used OpenSSL, so it would never do the session ID reuse. So it would always, if the connection disconnected, you would always get the full handshake on, on the next reconnect. Fixed now. There was actually, I, I forgot to mention it here, there was actually a, also a crash when you would get a, if you would do a connect, that is an HTTP connect through a proxy, um, and you would time out during that connect, you could also get a crash if you built curl to use OpenSSL. I forgot about it, I forgot to mention it here, but it was also a, an interesting and, and noteworthy bug fix in this release. And uh, again, 176 noted bug fixes. A lot of them test cases, maybe you don't care about them, but still a lot of bug fixes. So go, go read up about them if, in case you had problems in, in the previous release and, and you wanna see if we fixed them or whatever we did in, uh, for this release. Okay, going forward, upwards and onwards, the next release I think is likely to become 7.79.0 because I think we will do changes. There are changes in the pipeline and people are going to want to merge pull requests for this. So unless something happens, it'll be this version number. <coughs> Some things that we are working on for the next release that are already in, I mean, provided as pull requests and, and being discussed and stuff. So might happen and i'm not going to mention um, web sockets here but web sockets are being discussed on the mailing list so if you if you're interested in web sockets for curl join the libcurl mailing list uh, and uh, bring your ideas and visions and uh, remarks and, and uh, objections or whatever to the web sockets threads 
because we are going somewhere with that and it might happen maybe not for the next release but uh, going forward in the next release we we will probably see support for this option curl info cert info for the secure transport backend this is an option to just get the full set of certificate the entire certificate chain basically from the server from the tls handshake uh, when you've done a trans uh, transport we support it for several different tls backends already so this was just this will just make the support more complete for another tls backend good stuff <coughs> <clears throat> There's work to make sure that we support the dash dash fail early options for parallel transfers. It's a bit of a challenge. This option, you know, it it makes sure that if you wanted, for example, if you use curl, that command I told this is uh, to do transfer three URLs and the second one fails, do you want the third one to happen or not? Should curl stop early or should it continue to do the third even if the second failed? This actually tells curl to if the second fails uh, abort don't do the third transfer but when doing this in parallel it's a bit of a more complicated issue because then it's actually not one two three right then you might do all the three at once and if the second one fails what do you want to do it's not actually early then so it's more like yeah the second one fails but the third one has already started so if you've used the fail early one uh, option and you do parallel transfers it is different because then you need to abort the third one and maybe the first one too because they might not have completed uh, well anyway th uh, there's work going on to make sure that we at least make sure that this uh, works consistently and uh, we document exactly how it works so if you have any idea how, how if you use this with parallel yourself and you have an idea of what it actually should do or does so <laughs> get involved and tell us <coughs> I have this PR that I'm proposing. I, we haven't really discussed it a lot and we haven't really decided, so we'll see about it. But it's about making sure that you actually considering cookies transferred over localhost to be secure. You know, you can mark cookies only send these if you're on a secure connection. And uh, that secure connection is actually in, in browser land, they call it in a secure context. And browsers are nowadays slowly moving towards considering localhost HTTP. Um, I mean, not with without the S, HTTP colon local, HTTP colon slash slash localhost to be a secure context, and therefore you can send secure context to such a URL to, to and from such a URL. And this is a way to do this in curl. So I think it's a good thing to do because now when localhost localhost is always local, since this release right so we know it's local it it is secure it won't go to, over in the network it won't be snoopable by anyone anyway maybe we'll go there embed tls is one of those supported backends we have right and they just recently released version 3 which i think has been long coming and um wished for by those using embed tls because embed tls has really been lagging behind it hasn't been it hasn't supported tls 1.3 for example i think this new version does and but when they shipped this new version they broke the api in a few different ways so now curl doesn't build with this new version so there's work on fixing curl to make sure that it builds with this new embed tls version I think it'll happen in this release cycle. We'll see. If you're one of those users, get involved and help us fix it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, what's funny is that they boasted about their API to remain the same even in this version, but apparently it's not the same because um, curl can't build with it. Anyway, still some pending work and I'm just going to just briefly mention it because these are the same things I mentioned in the previous release so they're slowly not really happening so we'll see these are things that we could fix in the next release possibly if people are actually interested in and in, in doing it I haven't seen a lot of interest in, in getting these things landed so I I suspect that they will might not happen in this release either mm. 
If you're interested in any of these four items that I'm not even going to speak up about, get involved and make sure that push them forward, clean up the, the problems in the PRs and, and, and move them forward. Uh, I will see what I managed to do myself. And also if you, if you don't, I mean, another way to do it is if you can't fix them yourself, get involved and, and maybe get a curl support contract and, and so that I can get some inspiration to do it during work hours. <coughs> The next curl release will happen on September 15, 2021. That is 56 days from now, unless something really, really drastic happens. Sometimes I do a shorter release cycle, you know, when I messed up my release completely and I'm just crossing my fingers uh, that I didn't do it this time. So yeah, we're sticking to the schedule. And if you wanna read up about what's going to be included in the next release, this is the URL for that it will be updated uh, regularly uh, over the release cycle uh, over the next eight weeks so if you go there you will see what it what is going to be included in the next release and, uh, and as i mentioned if you have any problems you need anything new ports help with curl any issues you need fast tracked or if you want to modify the roadmap for me personally get in touch with us and get curl support going that also then supports the project, of course, because that's the way I, uh, that, that, I mean, that's that's the, my paycheck, right? If if you get support from Wolf SSL, I can keep getting my paycheck from Wolf SSL to do this full time. If you find any bugs, any wrong documentation, any misfeatures, anything that is doesn't work the way you think it should work, or as the documentation says it should work, file a bug about it on, on GitHub in the issue tracker there. We're usually pretty good at fixing bugs once we know about them, um, <coughs> usually. And of course, as I mentioned, we have fixed five security problems this time. And all of those security problems were reported on this site. This is the hackerone.com slash curl site. You go there, you report a, a curl problem. And of course it is completely private and not disclosed uh, when you report them there because we wanna work on them, fix them, you know, really understand them and, and um, actually also alert uh, some distributions about them before they go public. And of course we want to go public as soon as possible, but we also want to make sure that we do it responsibly so that we hurt uh, as few users as possible. Usually we make sure that the next release uh, contains the bug fix or the, the security fix or, or all the fixes actually that we do during that cycle. But if there's a severe enough, or if, if you would report a really, really sec serious security problem, we can, of course, do a, a release sooner than that. It rarely happens, but it could happen. I want to emphasize that we have a bunch of good sponsors that make sure that we can keep on paying bug bounties every release cycle. Uh, we have security problems reported, and of course, going from top to bottom, the, the, the major ones at the top, Wolf SSL and Fastly being maybe the primary ones. Hacks has been the one that has been around forever. And then of course, a lot of smaller silver sponsors <coughs> that actually make all of this possible. And um, we, we love them. Go to this website, curl.se for everything curl. Pretty much everything should be documented. So if there's any details anywhere, uh, if it's not on, curl, on the curl site, uh, ask us about it because we should have everything documented. And I should mention that, of course, you can get a FIPS a certified TLS solution with the curl from Wolf SSL. Um, get in touch. That is everything I wanted to say about curl 778.0. I hope you enjoy it. See you uh, in another curl release in, uh, well, hopefully in uh, 56 days. Bye.